Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the No Contest Wrestling Podcast. Today, we will have John Cena. We don't have a guest. We don't have a guest this week. Um, we had a scheduling conflict, but uh, we will continue to give you the best wrestling news that we can. Right. You know, our own opinion. Sorry to the guy who always posts the time that the guest comes on yeah, at the what bottom. You, what you want to do now? Yeah, we got a show to do, guy. Okay. But I am the heel that you love. Hey, O'Shea Jackson Jr., Hey, yo, it's me. <laughs> it's me. It's that T double O J I double G two J G. By the TJ way, Jefferson, you killed it last week with the that's what she said. I mean, people seem to like you that. body that. Yeah, man. I mean, well, just in case you guys don't know, I am a published author. I do have a book, and wow. it is called That's What She Said by TJ Jefferson. You can find it where books are sold, which is really nowhere now because we don't have bookstores. But peep it on Amazon. It's there. You can we didn't it. talk wrestling, bro. Ain't nobody reading books. That's true. Well, I read a lot of wrestling books. If that yeah, counts. shout out to Mick Foley. <laughs> but, TJ, a lot of wrestling has happened. You know, Did you, you get punched in the eye or something? Let's let's address this. Did, did, oh, did you oh catch, my glasses? Did you, did you catch a hard one? And No, no. Uh, Sarah, the makeup lady, just wasn't here, and oh, okay. I, I couldn't get my ugly off. So. Gotcha. Okay. I was just wondering. <laughs> I I didn't know if you. you oh, know. you see Jay Leno, yo, yo, my man yes. Jay Leno, bro. Apparently, outside of Pittsburgh, about thirty minutes outside of Pittsburgh, he's staying at a Hampton Inn. Mm. Man of the people. There's a restaurant. He doesn't want to walk a mile around, which I get. So he decides to take the short route, mm. go down the hill. My man ate it. Just face just scraped up. Let me tell you something. Broken bro. hand, ripped this, his nail off. I know this yeah. isn't, this is kind of wrestling related because Jay Leno, unlike most of you, has actually been in a wrestling ring. He's actually wrestled. So this does have some wrestling. It fits under the no contest yeah. agenda. But uh, Cap, I don't, I'm not believing that. Yeah, I saw your, I saw your tweet. You said that was some lone shark <laughs> looking activity. That is a lone shark injury if I've ever seen it, bro. <laughs> you telling me only this side of you is bruised and then you, a fingernail is off? What movie is this from, bro? <laughs> Why are you at a Hampton Inn? You're, you're worth half a bill. Do you think that Bischoff, Eric Bischoff, sent people? He still has a little bit of a, <laughs> a, a, a you know, just a little bit of a something with Jay Leno, so he, he, he went out there to get him? Do you think Dude, he, he has something to do with this? If not, then it's uh, uh, Team Coco. I know about y'all, bro. <laughs> Conan, I'm looking at you. Just rest poor well, Jay yeah, it's, uh, you know. All, all jokes aside, we hope that you feel better, Jay Leno. Whatever yeah. happened to you, it's none of my business. He wasn't you know? that bruised when he had to take on Rodman and Hogan. You know what I mean? Like, he got Dude, less bruises. Rodman, f f number one, Rod that that bash at the beach with Rodman and Carl Malone, <laughs> that was like. Well, I guess it was Eric and Hogan, not Rod. Yeah, so. yeah, but that was the biggest news at, at that time in yeah. my life ever. Insane. Dennis like, really Rodman is wrestling. Each other. Like in season, yeah, against Carl Malone, yeah, insane. And that's when I realized how long Carl Malone's wingspan yeah, was. My man, I was yeah. like, dude, this dude is massive. Yeah, Carl Malone was built to be a wrestler. Yeah, I'm, I'm just glad no Lakers were hurt. Carl Malone was there for one year, but that doesn't really count. <laughs> he don't count in your eyes. Let's talk wrestling, bro. Okay, well we were kind of. I mean, kind of, yeah, but like current, current wrestling. You know what's happening right now? We didn't discuss this last week. Didn't have a chance. The WWE is, WWE is introducing the new United States Women's Championship. Yes. Got a tournament going on. They're going to crown the first ever Women's United States Champion. We've been clamoring, we being the wrestling fans, clamoring for a, a mid-card women's title on the main roster. They got one in NXT. How are you feeling about that? I mean, I, I've been dying for it, you know. Anybody who really plays uh, WWE 2K, they know most of the playing the game is really just creating stuff. Mm -hmm. And then 10% is like playing the game. And uh, yeah, I've had women's mid card for years. <laughs> and, so, and, you know, I'm, I've been waiting for it. The design, we, we knew, we kind of know WWE's standpoint when it comes to that. You know, the, the whatever the men's belt is. Put a white strap on it. That's standard. Yeah. But I really wish some kind of way, and I, you know, some people were saying maybe it's a rights thing, but I really wish the Statue of Liberty was somewhere. Lady hey, Liberty that would on the women's dope. U.S. title, that would have been hard. That'd be kind of dope. Well, let's get our, our the, the third man of our six man tag, our, our manager, the Playboy Don in the back to throw this uh, bracket up and let's check this out. Right now, we had Bailey, Candice LeRae, and B-Fab. They yeah, went at it last week. B-Fab, there was like a, an underground swell for B-Fab, it seems like. I, you know, I, I wasn't really familiar with her as a wrestler, more like a mouthpiece mm. over all this time. But people, 
apparently getting behind her. I saw a tweet from Hurricane Helms that watching everyone in Gorilla, watching her on the monitor, they were happy for her. So mm. that's kind of cool. Maybe she'll get an opportunity. But Bailey, you know, predictably went ahead and, and won that matchup. And now we're also going to see Bianca Belair, Chelsea Green, and Blair Davenport. They're going to go at it. On the other side, Jade Cargill, Meek Chin, Piper Niven. They're going to be in a one-on-one-on-one -on -one -on -one situation. And then mm. we got Naomi, Tiffany Stratton, and Electra Lopez. One of these women is going, presumably, will walk out of Saturday night's main event as the new United States women's champion. O'Shea, looking at that bracket, what are you thinking? Who's going to walk away with the dub? I mean, it's really, obviously, what is the standout is Bianca and Jade mm -hmm. on separate sides. So that is a possibility. But I think the most interesting matchup is that Jade, Meechin, Piper. That can go either way. A lot of people are really behind Meechin and really think that the work that she's been putting in week after week, uh, it, it's kind of tailor-made for her. Jade, you, you don't really want to mess that character up. You know, she's been an unstoppable force and... Piper is just somebody who always can take a dub. She can yeah. always take a W. So By the way, the, not to interrupt you, the fact that we got away from, why would you look at Piper Niven, this just powerhouse unit, and make her do drop back in the day? It made no that sense. That was so, like. That was so awful. But, like, yeah, they're, they're finally putting her in the spot that she should be. Exactly. But I think that's the most interesting one. Every The other ones you can kind of feel. I don't know if I would necessarily, especially with, Tiffy still having the the money in the bank briefcase. I think Naomi takes that uh, that matchup, and you know with Bianca and and Davenport and Chelsea Green, there's a world where Chelsea Green steals a dub. But you know most of us probably feel like that's uh, going Bianca's way. There's a lot of people online that want Bianca to get that mm -hmm. title. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, it should be interesting. It should be interesting to see where they go. Don, can we can we pull that up again real quick? Um, I feel just because Bianca and Jade have the tag team straps, I think that's going to take them out of the running. Yeah, like, to win this to win this tournament. So not because I don't love them, not because I don't think they're good enough. But they I got just, hardware. I, Give somebody else. They're a already a champion. So mm -hmm. I'm going to eliminate Bianca and Jade. Now, do they make it to the finals? I'm not quite sure yet. I'm looking at this. I like what you said about Tiffany. She's got a briefcase. She can write her own story yeah. at any time. I think really what this is going to come down to is going to be Naomi and Bailey. Um, I Banger. think they're going to meet in the finals. And then we're going to see Bailey already one of the most decorated careers in, in women's Did wrestling. She grand slam twice. Grand slam twice. Then you got Naomi, and there's been a, a, another a huge groundswell of people just loving Naomi, wanting to see her get her flowers. So I'm going to go ahead and make my prediction. Wait a minute. With a new belt, does that erase Bailey's grand slam? You're not you, a grand slam no more. You're technically not a grand slam. That is disrespectful. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't think that's anything you can go and like, or you can't wipe that out. Hey, man, you're not a grand slam. Yeah, but you, you can't wipe that out. All so right, right, I'm going right. to go on record and I'm going to say that at the end of Saturday night's main event, when this tournament is all said and done, the new and inaugural Women's United States champion we're going to be feeling the glow. I think it's going to be Naomi. I Man. think Naomi's going, going to take that title. It's been a minute since I've seen Naomi with some hardware. I, I mean, I, I would love it. I would love to see that. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, Naomi versus Meechin might be nice in that, uh, uh, what do you call it, semifinals? Western Conference Finals? I don't know, dude, bro. <laughs> I know you only concern yourself with championship. Yeah, Final you know. Match. I'm a Laker and a Dodger. I get you. I get you. <laughs> this guy. Mr. Ben, a fan of baseball, all for all of, uh, let's see, 32 days Listen, now. I've been a fan of baseball for two months, okay? <laughs> and it's worked out for me. Perfectly fine. Well, good, because you know the Lakers ain't going to win nothing, so you might as well hop on that Dodger wagon. Am I am I tripping, or am I only a half game out of the number one seed for the West, bro? Did you not see Dalton connect hey, right, what, with that flamethrower? West Side connect? Bro, oh, my Here. God. Also, Snoop, that's going to have to be copywritten, all right? That's West Side <laughs> Connection is an ice cube thing. But, yeah, dude, we don't disrespect. Boy, 
you lucky this is a wrestling show <laughs> because it was it's about to get serious. Dude. All right, so wait, did you make your prediction though for the? Um, yeah, like uh, either Naomi or Meechin. Meechin, either, okay. yeah, because like Meechin really has bumped up not only you know with the entertainment side, but she's got a rally behind her now. You yeah. know the. Um, the fuse that she's had, I feel like she's put in the work, and it would be good to finally see uh, see some appreciation go that side. Yeah, I mean, but I, then Naomi's Naomi the OG, right? I, I, would, I wouldn't mind. I, you know, there's a, many of these women. I'd like all of them, so yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing any of them win. But you know, I, I kind of oh, feel. And while I got the time, while we talking about the ladies, hashtag push Zelina, <laughs> push Zelina. That's my dog. That's your I will. Dog right I. There. For, from now, from this day forward, every episode you see me on here, push Zelina, bro. Okay. Yeah. That's how you feel? That's how I feel. All right, bet. And bring back uh, Alistair Black. <laughs> <laughs> we might talk about him later. Uh, you know, let me skip ahead here. Just had some news that okay. dropped earlier today. It's kind of crushed me. I'm a little hurt. I don't know how what to make of this. Okay. I don't know if this is a work. I don't know if this is a shoot. But my girl, Timeless Tony Storm, oh she's my announced... God. Today, her retirement from wrestling. I, mm. I, I, she lost the AEW Women's Championship to Mariah May and All In. Mm. Since then, she's appeared at CMLL and Stardom, but she doesn't have any victories. Right. So she released a statement today saying that she is retiring from wrestling. I don't feel good about this. I'm a little hurt. To quote Alfalfa, I'm hurt, I'm confused, and I don't know what to say. Mm. That was Alfalfa from Saturday Night Live when Buckwheat got shot. Do your research. <laughs> Watch that. <laughs> Watch that clip. The dark. best Eddie Murphy. But yeah. O'Shea, talk to me, man. I, I, I need to compose myself because, you know, I'm a uh, Tony Storm fan. So how do you feel about this news? I believe her about as much as I believe Jay Leno, TJ. <laughs> <laughs> right. I don't. I don't. Cap. Cap. Oh, you know, cap. Cap. Full cap. Uh, there's no way. Ain't no way. And, you know, this is kind of what we would usually see happen from somebody who's about to rebrand yeah. or, like, change their character. And I don't want that either. No. You know? This when, timeless Tony Storm character has been money, amazing. Money. Like, entertaining mm -hmm. the best character over there. Like I, I'll go as far as say the best character in wrestling. Yeah. All of wrestling. We, Any don't, company, we don't see a lot of gimmick not type like things that, anymore. Yeah. Her, just the just the all around presentation of it, you believe it. The black and white camera, it's amazing. The way her her interviews, the way she speaks, the double entendres that she throws out, the fact that she's ready to f up Wendy Richter on site, you know, just uh, Tony Storm is amazing. I, you know, the only thing you can think of if this is real, you know, sometimes some of these wrestlers they go away. Maybe she's starting a family. Yeah. That was something I thought. Well, maybe. That could be the case. I'm really thinking this is a work. She's going to come back, maybe tweak the character. I hope it's not too much of a tweak because I love the character. I love Timeless Tony Storm. I'm a fan. So I'm interested to see. I hope this isn't true because I'm really depressed. Yeah, and, and, you know, Tony Storm, I obviously was a fan from NXT. Mm -hmm. um, and then it really felt like as soon as she got bumped up to the main roster, she was gone. You know, well, I, they tried I, to put her in a, a food fight angle with Charlotte. And I think Tony saw the writing on the wall and she's like, I need to be. Yeah. And I, I really thought Tony was going to be a, a huge part of the, the just the women's wrestling in WWE has champion written all over. her. Yeah. And when she went to AEW, she, at first she kind of had that the same feel that she had from WWE, yeah. but then she turned it on in such an amazing way. Her and Christian are two people that, w when they went to AEW, it was like, this is the best version of them I've ever yeah. seen. And it, it, you know, it, there's no way she's taking that from us. No. No can't, way. Can't be. You know, and I, like I said, I, I like Tony. I was always a fan, but I do remember, you know, as her AEW career went on, she's coming out, and I'm like, what? Like, who is she? I remember saying that one day, like, all right, was this the biker gimmick i'm like i just i don't quite get this character and then the groundwork started to be laid and yeah all of a sudden you're starting to see the change and then you know 
the way she talked, the way she dressed her hair, throwing up the shoe, yeah, the you know the chin and the tits out and all that stuff, and then it's like, oh, this is this yeah. is incredible, this is an man. entertainer. This is who an can entertainer. also uh, whoop ass, whoop ass. Man, that, best, that's what it's one about. One of the best wrestlers on the planet, Tony Storm. So yeah, I, I'm hoping it's not true. I'm hoping we're getting worked. I think we are. This is wrestling. Yeah. But I'm going to treat it as it's real. So, Tony Storm, I just want to say, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> you so a, foolish. It's been a pleasure watching you. And uh, just best of luck in, in your future endeavors. But I know you'll be back. That was beautiful, man. That was beautiful. <sighs> Were you trying to get some work out here? I see you, bro. Well, I mean, you know, you got, you got Den of Thieves 3 going to be coming out in 26. Hey, that, after, was, that was wishful thinking. It's two. After, what I'm saying, I want after, three, I want four. After, after two blows up in a few months, three yeah. is coming. You're going to need someone in your crew. I'm just saying, I'm right here. Me and Jerry Butler, you don't know. We used to kick it back in the day. You don't know that about me. Bro, you, you don't know that let about me. Find me. Out. Okay, <laughs> you don't know I knew Jerry Butler back in the day. It was my man's you back. You be wilding, dude. I, I, I knew it. I knew it was, all a, it was all a fake. It was all a facade. This dude is a crazy man. <laughs> Speaking of crazy men, yes, we already we talked about Tony saying you know having her retirement. Um, AEW doesn't need her, you know. Uh, Kenny Omega says something similar. What? What? Kenny says something similar. Eddie Kingston's talking crazy on IG. I don't know what's happening, but these are huge, huge pieces. Yes, over there, and I don't know if. Uh, obviously, I personally feel like Tony. And Eddie are working us, mm-hmm. but Kenny with his with his health issues. We saw him on New Japan before we saw him at AEW. You know that's something that's unfortunate because in in this storyline with uh, with Moxley, which I'm gonna I'm gonna get on y'all ass about that too because you lied to me and told me he was gonna take over the Superstation. That never happened. Uh, but with that, it kind of felt like we were just to use an anime term, waiting for Goku. <laughs> in, in Dragon Ball Z, all the good guys get their ass beat until Goku shows up and kind of <laughs> cleans everything up. Okay, It seemed like a perfect spot for the cleaner to come back. But now I'm nervous, dude. I want to see Kenny Omega. I want to see him back. I, I, I wasn't able... I was able, but I didn't watch his his run in Japan and things like that. So being able to see him on American television is a treat. You know, I, I, I love that. I want to see more of it. So I'm, you know, I'm nervous a little bit about Kenny. I, I'm thinking, obviously, this is all storyline. This is all going to tie in with Moxley saying this is his company. I'm interested, right? And that's what you want. You want your fan base to go, okay, let me let me sit down and, and let me figure out what's going on. Let me see where they're going to take this. And And I don't know. I have no idea. And that's what's good about this. We don't know what's going on. But that's wrestling. That's wrestling. I don't. I don't. I don't trust nothing. I'm just well, like, lying. D- well, Stone Cold told you that years ago. Yeah, DTA. DTA. Don't trust anybody. Don't trust anybody. Anybody or anything going on in wrestling. But look, there. I'm hooked. I'm hooked on what Mox is doing. I'm hooked on the fact that Pac never has street clothes on. Never. <laughs> Stay <laughs> ready. You ain't gotta get he ready. stays ready for a squabble at all times. You know, you got Cesaro, pound for pound, the strongest man on earth. You yeah. know, you got Marina Shafir, like. Don't tell Mark Henry that, bro. He gonna come here and oh, that's whoop right. our ass. Well, I, not not count Mark. Mark Henry's like the anomaly. When right, we talk right, about right. That. He's so, he the like, bar. Yeah, let me let me just yeah, <laughs> let me just make sure we're clear on that. And then you got Will or Yuta, you know. So the Death Riders, I think I may have called them BCC, but the Death Riders. Let let's roll with this. Let's see where this is gonna take us. You know, I'm I'm interested. And yeah, I'm just don't lie to me no more. <laughs> yeah, that's you, all I'm asking for. You hype me up like it was about to be this hostile takeover, and my man over here just beating people up. The best part about it was that Cesaro swinging uh, Darby into the garage. That was <laughs> that was hard. I like that. But uh, yeah, dude, I, I'm 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 holding out. Everybody knows. Last week, I I talked about how this was the most interesting story over there. I'm hyped for it. Hate the name Death Rider still. I'm not going <laughs> to switch up on y'all. But yeah, it, it it this has to hit. This has to land, and it has to be amazing. Mm-hmm. You know? And not to put pressure on the creators, but you're putting the pressure on yourselves. You know, letting us know in advance what the plan is, and then if it doesn't stick the landing, it's going to hurt. So, you know, I, I, I'm still holding out hope. 
Um, I, I need them to hit with this one, no doubt. And since we're on AEW, let's talk about the full Garrett card coming. Which up. is the honestly, I know All In is the big one. Mm-hmm. Full gear never disappoints. Never disappoints. You got Moxley versus OC Orange Cassidy for that AEW World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah, freshly I, squeezed. Freshly squeezed. I just don't think in order for this storyline to continue and 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 really make sense. Unfortunately, I don't think that this is OC's time right now. I don't no. think you can take the title off of Moxley at this point. His story is seemingly just beginning, so I feel like they got to let this ride a little bit. So I'm looking for Mox to to take out Orange Cassidy in the main event. Definitely. They, you know, they they built him up so high right now, like so high right now. And, yeah, I just don't see it. And Orange Cassidy, anybody who knows me knows I've been a fan of Orange Cassidy from the jump. Yeah. I think that is. From get-go? You, you yeah, were, yeah, dude, because it's just, it's he's hilarious. There's something, <laughs> it's different, right? We've never yeah. seen anything quite like him The before. wrestler who just, uh, doesn't yeah, care. Don't care. You know, and it well, took, admittedly, it took me a little bit to kind of come around to him. I'm like, yeah. what is this? But then I remember uh, years ago, he had a match with Pac. And I was like, yo, Orange Cassidy can go, bro. Yeah. He can go. Bro, right. if you let him, if you let him get them hands, it's a wrap, and it's over, bro. So it's it, over. It's going to be interesting. I think he and Moxley have the the capability of putting on a banger. I just mm-hmm. don't think this is OC's time right now. I no. don't think that title changes hands because this Moxley story is just catching some life right now. We're, we're hoping, it. and I'm I'm pretty sure this record still stands. I think Orange Cassidy has the most wins in AEW history. I think you're right. <laughs> like, I think you're right. Come on, man. It's hilarious. I love the I love his entrance. I love the one piece of pyro he uses. <laughs> Everything about it is just and I think it's it's because with my friend group, we have this thing where we hype each other up over the dumbest things, mm-hmm. just anything. It's just, uh, and I, I have that same energy when you see Orange Cassidy in the beginning because we all know once he gets going, yeah. it's a it's a different guy, which he he has to be, or it's borderline disrespectful to the business. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I'm a big fan. I just don't think it's gonna be a night. Yeah, I don't think so. Uh, Osprey versus Fletcher. That'll be an interesting yeah. match. I think. Uh, you know, Kyle Fletcher, you've talked about him. We've talked about him. He, he's a star in the making. Yeah. And uh, Will Ospreay, and many people feel he could be the best wrestler working right now. I can't say best wrestler alive because that's Max Caster. I don't want to get sued. Wow. You know, so we can't call him that. Uh-huh. He could be the best wrestler working in professional wrestling in the United States. <laughs> in AEW, not named Max Caster. We could, we, we could say that. But. Right. Osprey and Fletcher is going to be that, that, that you know, that could they're going to bring it out of each other. I got a feeling that could get the no contest wrestling podcast. Maybe our, our five star right there. We, Cause we got to start our own star. Uh, right. Ranking, you Honestly, know. you know what? I like that idea. Maybe we don't use stars. Maybe we no, use no, bells, no, no, no. We got to use, it. you know, maybe we <laughs> use super kicks, you know, power bombs, elbow drops. We got to come up with bro, something unique. You got, my, you got my mind going, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so then we got Jack Perry against Daniel Garcia for that TNT championship. Yeah. Last time I saw Jack Perry, he was strapped to the 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 hood of his own truck. Oh, yeah, and, that, and, was, that was that was that yeah. was I take back the Cesaro thing. That was dope. That was dope. That was dope. <laughs> Because you're thinking he, Daddy Magic, he beat him up. He's dragging him in the back. Garcia comes through. They lump up Jack Perry. They 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 strap him to the hood of his his little mobile. I don't, does that thing have a name yet? I don't know. No. Every time I see it, though, I just think about when The Rock was making fun of Booker and he said the short bus joke. <laughs> meet, 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 meet. Every time I see it, I think meet, meet. So that's right. what I call it. So we all know if Jack Perry, he, he just got drove off into the ether somewhere. I hope he's okay because we need him to uh, to defend his title uh, uh, at, at this match. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> uh, Swerve Strickland against Bobby Lashley. Yeah. Let's go. Yep. What Black as hell. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> what, do you think, what are your thoughts on that one? Um, That's another interesting one because you don't. Number one, the Hurt Syndicate got the numbers again. Yeah. That's always something to watch um, the character as far as Swerve is such a main staple of AEW that, I mean, he's so big he could take an L. But he's taken a lot of L's lately. That's yeah. the thing. He's, like he's, I mean, what can you do when you got a pack of wolves on you? Yeah. You know? It, it's just, it's nothing 
It's it's like when uh, 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 the bloodline, the bloodline right now, I, I don't care how amazing or how big your stardom is. Three, four dudes jumping you is three, four dudes yeah, jumping true, you. True. And nobody holds it against you if you lose to three or four humans. Yeah, like, good point, good point. It, so it, it, that, I think, I just don't, I don't see them giving Bobby an early L, like yeah, his that first pay-per-view. I guess that wouldn't make sense. So, yeah. Lashley, I guess, is, is going to yeah. find a way. Sorry, Swerve. That's our guy, Swerve. I know, know man. Uh, Only AEW got to be here. Thank you, <laughs> Swerve. Then we got Mercedes Monet against Chris Statlander for that TBS championship. I don't yeah. know if you heard our audio king in the back, Mike Del Tufo, go woo, because he nobody loves Mercedes Monet more than Mike Del Tufo. I'm going to tell you that. Mike. Bro, Mercedes, formerly known as Sasha Banks, bro. I've always been a fan. Um, but I, I don't know. Chris Statlander is kind of. You know, the whole Statlander thing was weird because she, they made her. She was a face and she was super strong. Yeah. Right. But she suffered some injuries, came back, defeated Jade Cargo, took yeah. her undefeated streak, sent her off to another company. So now you're thinking stats made. They had her lose the TBS championship a little prematurely, yeah. in my opinion. That happens a lot with happens that title. happens a lot. Yeah, I guess that makes sense for that yeah. title, right? But now she, she's a face. She turns heel on Willow. They have a little program. And then just one day she comes out, no Stokely. Yeah, her and Stokely were money together, yeah. in my opinion. And now she's a baby face again, which is great. I, I think it might be her time. Yeah, uh, I know. Or, as far as the character goes, they got her having so many different personalities. <laughs> you know, like I mean, be, remember she started off; she was like the alien, alien and yeah. I was like, that didn't really that didn't resonate with me. Yeah, because I know you're not an alien, right? But now you got Chris <laughs> Statlander, and they're just portraying her as this powerhouse that she is, and she's money, money, very she's believable, money. banger um, after banger after banger. Yeah. Especially with Camille out now with a hurt shoulder, she might not be able to help Sasha or Mercedes. I'm sorry, yeah. as, as much as she could. I'm thinking that Chris Statlander is going to take that title. Yeah, yeah and me. also, I think Chris is going to take it because it's time. It's time for Mercedes to go after the big the big belt. Yeah. It's, it, you know, you got Mariah just bodying everything. Everybody. She needs that nemesis, you yeah. know, and it, I think it's time uh, – Mercedes got to both heels. So we're not sure how that's going to work. These AEW fans seem like they want to boo Mercedes. So I don't know if turning her face is going to work. I don't know that you want to turn Mariah face at this point. I might, so. I mean, it might be a situation where it's out of your control. You know, the crowd will determine handle it for you. Yeah. I mean, Becky Lynch was supposed to be the heel when she uh, uh, stabbed okay. Charlotte in the back. When everybody was so behind Becky yeah, that yeah. she turned into the man. So, like, just let it happen, man. But we know what you signed Mercedes for, um, what you brought her in to do. And it, it, it wasn't to hold that title. Let's see her go for the big one. Yeah, and then, and then we got the tag team championships. Private Party taking on the Outrunners, who, yeah. you know, they, they taking me back to 85. Yeah. This is Saturday night, 605 WTBS. House of Black and the Acclaimed. Yeah. All of them going for that tag team championship. What are your thoughts, O'Shea? I've always, I mean, everybody loves the acclaimed. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I am not doing that. <laughs> Y'all got me. Never mind. I can't cuss on here that much. Come on, come on. But, uh, you know, I'm trying to stay monetized. But uh, I'm a House of Black type of guy. Yeah. You know, um, like I've said on Twitter, like I've said on here, that team is so perfectly balanced to just run through the company. I don't know what it is that makes it not happen, but they got the look. Mm -hmm. They got the the perfect balance as far as athleticism Size, speed, and power. power. Yeah, it's just like it, it's so much money that I feel like is being left on the table. And uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what they do. And also, I don't, I don't know if I'm ready for Private Party to lose the titles already. Yeah, I mean, what a feel-good story, taking out the Young Bucks, winning yeah. those belts. I, I'd love to see Private Party get a long reign, but... Um, you know he what? said, I, but... Um. I'm a, <laughs> I think maybe you talked me into this a couple weeks ago. I think House of Black. If not now, when? They're yeah. right there. It's Money is sitting on the table. Yeah. Like, they have every reason to be dominant. Yeah be dominant and you, when you see them as a fan you're like 
Yeah, I could totally believe that. I could yeah. totally believe Absolutely. them beating ass all week. You don't want to run into those cats in an alley or anything no. like that. You know what I mean? Like, no. All mm-hmm. right, so that's full gear. T- yeah. Took a look at that. Now let's go back over real quick. The women's war game match has oh, yeah. fully materialized. And now we know what we're, get- we're getting. We're getting Bianca Belair, Jade Cargill, Naomi, EO, and Rhea Ripley. Oh, my God. God, okay. that's so and they're stacked. gonna take on the two women's champions, Liv Morgan, Nia Jax, yeah. Raquel Rodriguez, Candace, and yeah. Tiffany Stratton. What are your thoughts on this? This war match games is matchup? so stacked. It's crazy. It's like it really is insane. And when I look at the two that I really am like, they're gonna have the spot, Candace and EO. They're going to have, there's going to be something where you're like, yeah. yeah, maybe they shouldn't have done that. Like, it's going to be something dangerous getting those two in well, on that match. Every year, EO in the in the game, she's on the top of the cage. Yep. She has a, a, a trash can on her head. Yeah. She's doing a moonsault. Every time it happens, I sit there and I pray, please don't please, let nothing happen to please EO. Please be okay, EO. Please don't let nothing happen to EO. <laughs> and she hits it. Candice LeRae, I feel like if you've only seen her work in NXT and WWE. Yeah, you, you don't, don't really understand that Candice LeRae used to wrestle men. Like, yeah. Candice LeRae, low key, is one of the best female wrestlers on this planet. Um, she just really hadn't gotten her chance to shine. I think it's kind of dope to see her put in this position. Yeah. Especially after losing her tag team partner, she could have been kind of floating in the air with like those, you know, shout those, out to Andy. You know, those those uh blow up dolls outside of, you know, gas stations. That yeah. could have been her. Shout out to Bailey. Shout out to Bailey. <laughs> uh yeah, the Bailey's buddies. I just should have said that. But yeah, it's cool to see kind of, you know, someone new in that in that main event yeah. spot. And you know, you got some powerhouses in this match. You got Nia, you got Raquel, you got Jade, you got Bianca. Like I think this is gonna be a fun oh Rhea, of course, the yeah. powerhouses. So I uh, I personally feel like the babyface team is going to take this, but because it seems that way, means the Hills are probably going to walk out. Dude. Because the Hills have the two women's world champions. Right. So how can That's huge. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it just looks like, except for, I think, three of them, it's just black and go NXT. Yeah. Black and go NXT and live in effect at War Games. Triple H, love what you're doing. <laughs> and then you mentioned them earlier. Gonna have the OG bloodline against the new bloodline. Yep. OG bloodline, they went out and made a a, a pretty good recruit and move, I, I must say, yeah. getting big Bronson Reed, mm. who seems like a perfect fit for that team anyway. Yeah, right? absolutely. Seems like once you saw it, you're like, yeah, you should be Makes with him. Sense. You know, and, and now what are the OGs going to do? Seth Rollins has always, already vehemently said yeah. he doesn't want anything to do with Roman Reigns. He doesn't want to help him. He gets taken out by Reed with help from the uh, the new bloodline. Yeah. Does he go back on his word? Does he try to help Roman? Roman calls wise man at the end of the episode. Phone's disconnected. What yeah. does that mean? Sami Zayn pulls a phone out of his pocket, throws it on the cart right. the couch. I don't know if you saw that. Does saw that it. mean something? I don't know. But guess what? You know what you did? You got me invested. Exactly. So I'm going to keep watching. Exactly. And that's the whole point. Because I don't know. Who's that fifth guy going to be? Is it going to be Seth? Is he going to go back on his word? Or is it going to be a certain man with a sword tattoo on his chest? Oh, my God. Very good friends with Paul Heyman. I would hmm. lose it. I just would imagine. Lose it. Just I imagine lose it. Yeah. If, if a certain Mr. Uh, Lesnar decides that it's time for him to come back. But why, again, why would he help Roman in the bloodline? I don't know. But I'm here for it. Right. I'm going to see this through. Adam Pierce posted on his official Twitter. Um, by the way, I'm never going to call it X. <laughs> it's just it's just weird to say in sentences. Posted a picture of Heyman and him looking at Brock Lesnar. Really? Yeah. Like, just the picture, no caption, just Adam Pierce and Paul Heyman looking at Brock Lesnar, who was laid out on a stretcher. And so, you know, we we don't Wait, know. What was Brock going. laid out on the stretch? Well, right? Like, when does that happen? But it was on some SmackDown. Okay. But that's what he posted today. So we'll. That was today? That was today. Like, on my way here. And by the way, you know, you and I touched on this uh, a couple weeks ago. I know I, I did at least. Adam Pierce, Nick Aldis, at some point. Those two yeah, let's get it cracking. You got to get it cracking. Let's but. get it cracking. But let me let me take a moment. 
to talk to Seth Rollins. Seth, what the hell are you talking about, dude? <laughs> what are you talking about? You have been so aggressive about saying no to joining Roman and that you don't want to be a part of this or help this tyrant win. What do you think made him that way, Seth? <laughs> what are we talking about, dude? Do you not remember a, a Money in the Bank where you helped him keep his universal title against Edge? What are we talking about, Seth? You talk, you talk, call him a tyrant. You guys have only seen each other, what, two, three times? You're not even on the same show. You weren't affected at all. It's all right, Seth, okay? we The writing's on the wall. Just come on. Come on over. Help him out at, at War Games. But to act like... You have no reason for this guy to turn out the way that he did. <laughs> it's just insane, man. You can lie to me. You can't lie to you. Thank you, Seth. Sorry, man. I just, I just I, don't, I don't like, what are we talking? Like, what kind I mean, of nonsense is this? I mean, Seth did kind of break up the shield. Kind of? He, he did kind of strike first. He, he did kind of take Roman's world championship huh. at WrestleMania. He did some things that would make Roman not like him that much and make him want to come and the gaslighting is insane. But you also got to remember, I don't Roman Reigns has never pinned Seth Rollins either. Yeah. So there's right. that. So what are you really mad yeah, at? So it's like, it's like, <laughs> like you get over all the time on him. G. So. Yeah, it's like <laughs> Laker fans, Laker fans. We hate the Sacramento Kings. Why? <laughs> Why do we hate them? They, they like, got we, nothing for you. They've done nothing to me. Like, I've, I've beaten them all the time. Mm -hmm. What am I upset about? It's just being petty. You're being petty, Seth. Okay? <laughs> now they jumped you. Bet you wish you had some help then. But, like, yeah, you, you it's so – the gaslighting is crazy. You can't mentally abuse somebody <laughs> and then be like, why are you tripping? <laughs> hey, this dude weird. <laughs> like, Seth, come on, bro. <laughs> and the writing's on the wall. I really feel like Seth is going to be the fifth member. And then, spoiler – what I feel like is going to happen because, I, you know, we're not affiliated with either of these companies. It's just all guessing. What would it be like if after the war games, a certain guy comes out, somebody who was upset at Bad Blood seeing Roman team up with Cody. Now I see you teaming up with Seth, too. So I really think there's a chance that we see uh, the final boss at the end of war games. Yeah, I would. I would it's a big four. They they need something. Yeah. Last year you brought CM Punk out. Somebody's got to come out, oh, man. I, this Survivor I, Series. You can't top that moment no. anyway. Like that was an untoppable moment as it does. Yeah. But and, and you know even now people are still saying they should have saved them for the Rumble. No, no. Because at the Rumble Everybody we would have been expecting that. it. Yeah. You would have been the, the, the chatter. Yeah. The chatter was very low for Survivor Series, which yeah. made it even more special when when he came out. What I mean, just an incredible moment. Wait, real quick. What, what's your favorite? Rumble surprise you ever got where you were like, oh, I, I, I don't know if it's my favorite, but because I haven't had a chance to think about it and you just said it, I don't remember the year, but the year Booker T came back out mm -hmm. and, and Matt Stryker literally lost it on air as he's <laughs> announcing and, and he goes, it's a mark out moment, bro. And I'm marking out mm. And uh, that moment right there. Cause Booker T hadn't been seen in dub on WWE TV in years. Also Kevin Nash uh, diesel came back that, yeah. that rumble. So I, I not necessarily my all time favorite, but that is definitely on the short list. I think edge edge for sure. Here's why. Answer. Here's why that was the day Kobe, Kobe Bryant died. passed away. Yeah. Okay. I'm in Miami, you know, we the Rich Eisen show, we're, we're down there for Super Bowl week. We get the call, we're walking somewhere to get our badges that we need to access different things. Yeah. When the phone calls start coming in about Kobe and it happened. So that day, that Sunday was just, honest to goodness, Laker fan or not, it, it, just as a human being, that was one of the worst Man. days. That's one of those days you'll never, ever, ever forget. So for the Royal Rumble that night, we needed I an, need a release. We needed an outlet. We needed something to feel good because, man, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I like tears I flowed. About nothing. Tears flowed that day, man. And and these people that lost their lives that was that was tough. So the Royal Rumble happened, and Edge coming out was so unbelievable because we didn't know it was going to happen. We thought Edge was never going to come back. Yeah. 
And when that music hit, man, it was the most joy I think any of us had felt in 12 hours. For sure. Because the world was that disappointed. And as a wrestling fan, that moment, having Edge came back just gave you just like a glimmer of hope that, all right, man, maybe things will be all right a little bit. Yeah. Because this day is awful. And then I'll never forget the look on Edge's face when he came out yeah. and kind of recognized the pop. And what yeah. was, and if you got to go back, go to YouTube, One rewatch that. Ones. Look at the look on the man's face. He's he's stunned. And so I, I think just basically because of what happened that day, that moment I will always remember because man, we needed that moment on that day. Yeah, I um I was filming a show called Swagger, which is a basketball show. Okay, and I I it was in January, so I. Just a couple of days before, I was telling everybody about Kobe scoring 81 points. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I, being completely surrounded with basketball for the show, I'm bringing up Kobe all the time. And everybody's just like, oh, my God, here he goes again. And it was a, our last rehearsal before our first day of work on the show. And I, I went to the car. I, as soon as I touched the door handle, the entire crew ran out after me. And everybody, like, just looks like they they saw a ghost. You know, it's just like there's a there's an eerie look in everybody's face. And the first AD, which is a guy named Austin, he was on a phone call, and he goes, are you sure? Are you sure? My first words were, is it about the Lakers? Because we had just got Braun and AD, and I'm thinking somebody hurt. And then uh, he said, it's, it's worse. And so now I'm scared because I think it's about my dad. So I take my phone out, and I got like 30 or something texts. Oh, So I'm like, dude, something happened to my dad. And so <laughs> I, I, I scroll and uh, he's one of the techs, so I'm like, all right, that's cool. And at the bottom, it was confirmed, you know, the helicopter crash. And I was so it, – it, it, it takes a special person to affect me the way that that did, you know. And he's not my – like, he felt like a member of my family, you know. And I uh, went to the hotel, uh, saw my uh Girlfriend at the time, she sucks now, but like at the time she was cool. <laughs> um, and yeah, I just broke down and cried for hours. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, my, my buddies over at ESPN, uh, Steve Mason, John Ireland, they called me, had me talk on the radio while I'm crying about Kobe. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, just put on wrestling just because like it's the rumble. I, I'm not going to miss the rumble. Yeah. And when I heard, you, you think you know me? Yeah. My initial reaction was, no, <laughs> it was just a, a feeling that I needed so bad. And so I think that on top of how much we love Edge, Adam Copeland, everything that he's been through, that on top of the fact that emotionally I needed it. Yeah. It's my favorite one of all time. And I don't think it'll ever be topped. Yeah. Like I said, that moment was like, it was super necessary yeah. because that was a dark, dark day, man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, Edge Edge came through. They the whole WWE came through because it was I know I needed it. Yeah. And I wasn't that big of a obviously a Laker fan, therefore not that big of a Kobe basketball Laker fan, but as a just as a human being, as a as a man, as you know, like, yeah, man, that that hurt. It yeah. hurt. So yeah. Edge coming out was it. Yeah, dude. Yeah. And that was the sad moment. On No Contest Wrestling. <laughs> this is our third week giving you one. There it is. Bro. <laughs> so, you, you know, Shay, you know, one thing that we've done, and I, I'm going to give you full credit for this, you know, you and I, we didn't really sit down a lot, talk a lot about what we wanted to do with this podcast. It was like no. we had a few chats. I think we were on the same page just like instantly. During the week, we might chop it up. You know, we'll text each other once or twice. But, like, we're pretty much on the same page. Yeah. So, I'm going to give you full credit. Our first show, you said, hey, I want to ask this question. And you said the question, and it was very similar to a question that I had planned on asking. And I was like, nah, actually, 
I like that. Let's let's roll with that. And that question has become a staple with us. And that is 50 guys in a bar. <laughs> yeah. You have to fight your way out. You need four other people to yeah. help you get out that bar. That has been our signature question yeah. on this podcast. No, it's juicy. Yeah, right? Now, we don't have a guest today. Yeah. So I think we have to do what's right, and we have to ask each other. Yeah. So I'm going to start with you. Oh, okay. Shane Jackson. Okay. Junior. Damn. You're at a bar. You're in the Great 1-8. You're in the Valley. You're in Tarzana, yeah. in Sherman Oaks, the mean streets of Studio City. <laughs> and you're at a bar, and there's oh. 50 cats in there yeah. that don't like you because you're a Nepo baby. Yeah, that's right. You know, Nepo baby's up. Nepo, you know, they don't like you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you're wearing your sunglasses at night. You know? You need four wrestlers to yeah. help get you to the whip. Who are your four that you're picking? And I'm going to make this easy. We could go all time. I don't necessarily want to do that. I think let's save that for another time. Okay. This is a four active participants in the world of professional wrestling right now Dang, to help right you now? get to that bar. Because I for sure was about to get pick TNA bar. Kurt Angle. I know. <laughs> TNA Kurt Angle. I'm not going to say his, his nickname. That's yeah, rude. Let's not. Let's but not. Uh, all right. All right. Active right now. I for sure got to take Jacob. Okay, <laughs> I, Jacob. Jacob, I too. you gotta roll with me, bro. Um, let's see. So Jacob, for sure, he gotta come. Um, oh my God, I feel like I'm not thinking of somebody. Of course, already, this is tough. Dude. It's just how it is, dude. Uh, oh, I gotta take Braun Breaker. Okay, I just I'm, I'm starting to feel safe. I feel safe. <laughs> um. Let me see somebody on the other side. Samoa Joe. Okay. For sure. Right now, we got a lot of mass. All right. We got a lot of mass. Um, last one. Ooh. I know. I know, guys. I'm taking a long time, but shut up, dude. All right. I got to think about this. This has to be, this has to be a good one. Um, I don't want to put Roman in that situation, bro. He's, he's busy. He's got things yeah, to you, do. Roman ain't at the bar. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll take a. I'll take a. Oh wait, this sucks, dude. I don't <laughs> like this. This is this the pressure I put on this people. The pressure, you, you know, this, this is garbage. I, I'm feeling I feel, the pressure because I don't want you to take one of the three I got. All right, so, all right, so. all right. Yeah, but like you know, my man Strowman going through it with his knees. I don't want. I don't want to put him in that situation either. Okay. Uh, I guess. All right, I'm going to take Bronson. I'm going to take Bronson. Bronson I'm going to just fill okay. out the mass. I feel like right there alone, I could get into any building in the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we'll be, we'll be fine. Okay. All right. Yeah, what about you, man? Damn, well, I want ask to me the question so we can cut this problem. Let me know, <laughs> TJ. Let me know. It's 50 dudes. They tired of all your clipperdom. And all the nonsense that you spew about the Cowboys. Oh. And they want to, they, 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 they're threatening you. Okay. You need four current wrestlers, current wrestlers to get you to the car. To get me to the car. Yeah, we need to get to the car. <sighs> okay. Who that is. I'm going to pick guys who I, all right, I just wrote one down. I think he may have. But no, I don't think any of these have been mentioned so far. Okay. All right. So I'm going to pick these guys just based upon the fact that they haven't been mentioned. Um, I'm going to take Alistair Black. Solid. If you know anything about him, the Muay Thai background, just go yeah. watch some videos of him striking. The man's legit, real deal. He's no joke. He's helping me get out that bar. Um, okay. This guy just got released. But what I don't think his former employer did was really let people know how dangerous he was with his hands. Former gold gloves boxer, a guy who was on the offensive line for NFL teams. And I know a guy who played with him and then said, this guy was someone nobody wanted work with Baron Corbin. Oh my God. My dog. Baron Corbin, wolf. I've been a Baron Corbin. You can go back and look at my Twitter. I've been a, a Baron Corbin fan from day one. First of all, end of days, quite possibly top five finishers of all time. Sick. I've only seen it get kicked out of one time. Just a beautiful finisher. He would put on, you know, 350-pound Bull Dempsey, or he put it on Becky Lynch. Like, yeah, she, beautiful, that was great. Beautiful finisher. Yeah. 
Uh, like I said, unfortunately, he's in between jobs right now. Whatever he does, he's going to be all right. So Alistair Black, Baron Corbin, again, I'm trying to name people who haven't been. I, You know what? I, I need a guy who's going to really just clear out a volume of people. So I'm going to take Powerhouse Hobbs. Yeah. Will Hobbs yep. from AW. I'm going to take him because uh, Hobbs just looks like he's with it. <laughs> you know something saying? about you something about powerhouse Hobbs <laughs> tells me he's down with it and uh yeah so i would like i'd like to have him and then who else i need one more Whew, this is so tough like i said i'm trying to like reach for someone who hasn't yeah already been said hmm i Ooh, this is tough. Man. Yeah, that last spot this last sucks. Spot. Uh, <laughs> you know, honorable mention to my man, the the indestructible man, Darby Allen, because he'll just <laughs> throw his body at everybody and right? tell us, save yourself. So I got Aleister Black. I got Baron Corbin. I got Powerhouse Hobbs. I got me. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just because he hasn't been named and just because, despite the fact that he's a nice guy and he's friendly and he's doing comedy bits, I know he's got a legit wrestling background. And with a man of his size, he's going to tear some people up. I'm going to go with my man, Otis. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go with that's, Otis. That's that's mass. That's mass. That's I'm just mass. thinking that's heavy machinery. Yeah, you know, like, absolutely. You know what that is. So, yeah, Black, Corbin, Hobbs, me, yeah. Otis. Like I said, a couple guys who have it. Tommaso Champa get down too, right? Oh, you think he don't when he do? <laughs> yeah. you, think, you think he wouldn't when he would? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Man. Oh, you know what? Uh, there's another guy. You know what? No disrespect, to Otis. I'm gonna take Otis out, but not yeah, because man, enjoy yourself. Not because I don't think he's worthy. He but just because don't want to put you in is, danger. There is another guy who I feel does get down. Carrying Cross. He's the oh, guy. Sure. So with all apologies to Otis, you're still my man. Black, Hobbs, Cross. Yeah. Me. Get into the car. Get into the car. You get into the car. That's what's that's what's important. Oh, here. and Corbin. I forgot to mention. Yeah, Corbin. Oh, I, I will say this before we let y'all go. The one flaw I've always had with Baron Corbin, mm -hmm. Kansas City Chiefs fan. Disgusting. Well, he played. Yeah. Disgusting. Disgusting. I don't give a damn. <laughs> I don't care if you if your dad owned the team. Disgusting. Disgusting, bro. I hate the Chiefs. Well, you're a Raiders fan, so that Hold on. Or Hold your, on. Your dad. I was I come from a Raider family. Uh -huh. I have black and silver in my heart. And on your jacket. But I am a Los Angeles Rams fan. Okay, my bad. I forgot on, all dog. things are Los come Angeles. On, I knew better than that. LA all day. All LA, all LA all day. Raiders left. California. All right. I, I'm sorry. Y'all ain't been good since the logo had both eyes and they never did. <laughs> That's something I want to, you know, we're getting a lot of things, a lot of things I want to get into on this podcast, you know, and like I said, we're big on lists. We, we want to bring you like our top tag team lists, our, yeah. our, our top football players turn wrestlers list, yeah. our top female wrestlers list, you know, our top barefoot wrestlers list, our top wrestlers with masks, our top yeah. wrestlers with face paint. I feel like all that's going to come from this podcast and of course some of the best guests that we could possibly bring to you and remember you can always follow us on instagram there's no contest on twitter or the the x thing that he refuses to call it mm -mm. uh you know no, not me not you not in my america <laughs> <laughs> so you find us at there's no contest you can find us at no contest wrestling podcast you can find us on the rich eyes and show youtube channel and i think i may have switched it to there's no contest is twitter okay no contest wrestling podcast instagram what is this riddle bro I don't know what's going on. Man. Speaking of Riddle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we got, we got some fillers out for Riddle. Hopefully one day soon you'll see him sitting in there with us, along with a lot of people. we got a lot of feelers out, folks, and yeah. a lot of people have reached out to us. We've reached out to a few just trying to get everything put together. But, uh, yeah, we're going to continue to to bring you some some great guests. And, and by the way, if anyone out there is watching and you represent some of the old school wrestlers, like – those are guys I grew up with I want to talk to. Like, who represents the magnificent Morocco? I want to talk to them. The Rock and Roll Express, I want to talk to them. You know, wrestlers like that, old school NWA type, WCW type guys. If you're out there, 
and you're interested, hit us up on one of those social media platforms, man. We'd love to chop it up with you. You know who I want? Where's Where's the camera? Right. Here, right. I want Mick Foley. Oh yes. So I want Mick saying. Foley. I want to sit, talk, laugh, chop it up with Mick Foley. That is right now. It is my dream episode. Yes, we will get you know the the big current people. Of course, but Mick Foley, yeah, it would be necessary. an honor. I got to get Mick Foley, and I will get Mick Foley. Oh, don't you mean we will get Mick Foley? Because, like, I'm here, too. So. Oh, we wrestling, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was a promo. I'm sorry. We can't do a handicap. But, yeah, Mick Foley would be huge. Huge. No doubt. I want to give a shout-out to my man. You see him on my T-shirt right now. Let me move this out of the way a little bit. He touched the mic. That's me and Shinsuke Nakamura. <laughs> this was from yeah. 2015. I flew to Coney Island, New York to watch a Ring of Honor show at a minor league baseball field because Nakamura came. ROH in New yeah. Japan did a thing. And like I said, I'm a huge Nakamura fan. He just Welcome made his back. he made his return. Looks like yeah. he's going to be challenging uh, LA Knight for that United States championship. Yeah. Look, no disrespect to anybody, but I'm going to root for Nakamura against pretty much anyone yeah, other wrestler dude. on the planet because I love the dude. That's my guy, but I'm happy to see him back. And hopefully, you know, they can you know, make something good. Hey, my happen. boy looking like a Sith Lord in there. Right? Yeah. Man. I you know, I, I just don't change the music. Back in the like when he made the heel turn, they switched and they added the lyrics bit. to yeah. the music. It didn't the crowd well, needed I, I that. think they, they didn't want the crowd sing song in along, so they switched up because they wanted him to be You're messing with good things. Right. Man. Well, you know. Now you gave it to Seth. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got anything else? I think that's it. Ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to thank our guest, John Cena, for coming with us today. This is the No Contest Wrestling Podcast. We will be back next week, every Wednesday. You know where to find us, wherever you listen to podcasts, and, of course, here on the tube. Um, see you later. Hey, remember, same bat time, same bat channel. 